Hello everyone, this is your host Jacqueline Diaz. Welcome to Sweet Savage Flame. It's been a while since we've uploaded some content and I apologize to our listeners for that, but we've come back with some great content today. We're going over the seminal work by Teresa Dennis, The Silver Devil. Now, this is a legendary piece of fiction in the annals of bodice rippers and romance novels. Uh, So I think this is something that uh, you guys will really appreciate if you're fans of that genre. Now, Teresa Dennis is a sort of luminous light that existed for just a very short time, unfortunately. Um, According to the scant information available that I found on the internet, her name, Teresa Dennis, was a pseudonym for Jackie Bianchi. Bianchi was an Englishwoman of Italian descent. She was born on April 29, 1947, in London, England, to Joseph George Bianchi, a police officer, and Marjorie Bianchi, née Bird. Bianchi attended secondary school in London. Um, as far as her politics went, she was a moderate, a Tory with liberal tendencies. Since childhood, Bianchi was inclined to be around books. So it was no surprise that her first job was in London's Newham Sec- sorry, London's Newham Public Library Service as a librarian from 1965 to 1969. Later she worked as an insurance clerk for a few years. Then she found a job as a secretary for Wynn Industries Limited before focusing on writing full-time in 1974. And For several years, she would work on what would become her first novel and what many consider to be her masterpiece, The Silver Devil. Personally, I prefer her second book, The Flesh and the Devil, but today we'll just talk about The Silver Devil. Now, Teresa Dennis had a uh, sense of whimsy. Um, Bianchi had taken her pen name from the fey Captain Terry Dennis from the British romp Privates of Parade, a play and film about gay soldiers attempting to perform a drag queen review. So she was always had a little bit of tongue in cheek behind her work, even as intellectual and as deeply, deeply researched her work was. In fact, So in 1978, as I said, that was the publication of her first novel, The Silver Devil. It was supposedly based on the dark themes found in the Jacobean play, The Revenger's Tragedy, which touched upon violence, lust, revenge, and sexual and gender dynamics. The Silver Devil was first released with Futura Publications in England in 1978. Afterwards, It was reprinted by Ballantine Books in the U.S. There are two different covers to the Silver Devil book. The Ballantine book is the blue edition with a cover art by Tom Hall. It's beautiful work with uh, Duke Domenico sitting in his throne and his Felicia sitting nude on his lap. Um, I don't have this version of, unfortunately, I have the Futura edition, which is still a fine edition, but I just prefer the looks of the Tom Hall cover. The Futura edition is red with uh, Felicia staring in at at a mirror, and looking at the mirror also is Domenico, and his image is looming behind her, ever-present. Now, Teresa Dennis's second book, The Flesh and the Devil, came out two years later in 1980 as a Futura paperback. It was only published in hardcover U.S. uh, by St. Martin's Press. Um, I have both those editions. I wish it had been released in the U.S. by Ballantyne. I I don't know why it wasn't. Um, And according to Jackie Bianchi in Contemporary Authors Volume 105 by the Gale Research Company, published in 1982, she said, I began writing 
eight years before thinking of submitting my first manuscript, which was luckily accepted instantly. The principal problems are finding sufficient time to write and my own perfectionism. Currently, I have to travel too much, too far, too frequently, and have difficulty in balancing the demands of two careers in a private life, plus my home life that is not spent as a typewriter. Now, Bianchi went on to famously be an editor for Mills and Boone. She was successful collaborating with authors such as Penny Jordan, Lee Michaels, Emma Goldrick. In addition, she discovered and guided Australia's all-time best-selling romance author, Emma Darcy, who was also known as Frank and Wendy Brennan, a married couple. What was most fascinating for us, said the Brennans, was that she didn't cut 40, 50 pages. She cut a paragraph here, a phrase there, a sentence here. She showed us how to tighten up the writing and move forward more quickly. We learned so much from her, said the Australian authors about Bianchi's editorial style. Now, Teresa Dennis had plans on writing more books. She was working on another romance set in 17th century England and France. She was also delving into research about ancient Greek legends and epic poems. Bianchi loved classical theater, poetry, and music. She had been a breast cancer survivor and was in remission after treatment. Around the time of her passing, she lived in London with roommates and several animal friends. Sadly, Bianchi died much too young in a car crash accident. According to former Mills and Boone sa- author Sally Bowman, it occurred in either 1987 or 1988. And that is unfortunate. That, uh, but we were blessed with two very wonderful novels and two very different novels. Even though you can tell they were penned by the same person, they're very different yet similar in that the heroes are incredibly, incredibly magnetic. And I, I would not call them alpha heroes because alpha heroes are men that get their women at all costs, but also dominate the world by leading other men. Her men were, can't be quantified in terms of alpha or gamma or, or sigma, although I would tend to say that uh, her hero from the flesh and the devil is more sigma than alpha, but Again, these words really are meaningless when it comes to describing the ferocity and intensity of our heroes. Now today, I'm going to focus on reviewing The Silver Devil. And The Silver Devil is a book I had a... Uh, I did it around for a long time to review because it is such a difficult, difficult book to review. It's, it's so multifaceted that calling it a romance is not, is not enough. It, it, is, it is much more transcends romance. So The Silver Devil by Teresa Dennis was published in 1978. The edition we have on our website is the H. Tom Hall cover by Ballantyne. Um, again, it's a beautiful cover to look at and it tells you everything about Domenico. He is a ruler, he is austere, he is almighty and you see him wrapped in his white robes while Felicia is nude sitting on his lap, vulnerable. But even though she's vulnerable, she is incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, she's a very fascinating character, almost as fascinating as Domenico himself. Now, let's get to the heart of the book here. As I said, I put off posting an analysis of The Silver Devil for a long time because I didn't know how to critique it. If you're a hardcore lover of old school romance or bodice rippers, you might be familiar with this legendary novel. A legendary romance. Teresa 
Dennis was a magnificent author whose writing pulled the reader in from the first word and never lets go. Sadly, she died young in the mid-1980s after publishing only two books. The Silver Devil was followed by The Flesh and the Devil. Both are superlative works of fiction. The Silver Devil is out of print, a hard paperback to find. And if you do, it will cost you quite the penny. Now, at the time that I had written this review, um, I had seen one eBay posting um, for the flesh and for, I'm sorry for the silver silver devil at $159, and that was relatively cheap compared to other listings that I'd seen that were upwards of $1,000. I guarantee you, if you get the silver devil you're going to be hard pressed to find it anything less than $200. Uh, I purchased my, purchased my edition 11 years ago for $12. At the time I thought that was too much, but <laughs> hindsight has shown me that I, I got a big deal, a good deal. But there's a, a good reason that this book is highly prized. The Silver Devil captivated me with its stunning characterization and intense passionate tone. The enclosed world of 380 pages made me truly believe that in the imaginary dukedom of Cabria, there lived a proud duke so handsome and omnipotent that with the snap of his fingers, he was swiftly provided with whatever he desired, including one lovely peasant girl named Felicia. The Setup he sat on his horse, unmoving, a somber black figure in startling contrast to the vivid fit colors around him, the sun dazzling on his white gold hair. There was no laughter in his face, and his eyes were not searching the house fronts for diversion. Instead, he was staring intently up at my window. It is a hot summer in the year 1605 in Fidena, a fictional town in the fictional province of Cabria, just set north of Naples. Felicia Guardi is the sister of an innkeeper who's just gotten married. Her sister, Lachelia, is, is a greedy and hard taskmistress. Felicia's half-brother, Antonio, is not much better, as he bears no love for the girl with whom he only shares a mother. For our poor Felicia was not just the, chi the child of her mother's husband. Her actual father spent one brief night at the inn, sharing a fleeting moment of passion with her mama. Adding to the gothic allure of this novel is the narration. The story is told from Felicia's first-person perspective, appropriate for such a macabre tale of lust and love. She describes the overwhelming heat and decay of Fidena as a plague runs through town. Like a princess out of a fairy tale, Felicia is forced to slave away her days until a handsome prince falls in love with her and takes her to his castle home. The Silver Devil One day, Felicia stands by the window and is seen by Duke Domenico, a white, blonde-haired, black-eyed sensualist of a tyrant. His desire for her is powerful and instantaneous. The Duke demands to have her, and with a snap of his fingers, she's made his. Felicia does not want to go willingly. Yet what is she, an illegitimate peasant, to do? In vain, she resists. Felicia's brother and sister-in-law drug her to surrender to the devil's demands. Although Felicia is attracted to this magnetic demigod, she displays a strong will, refusing his seduction despite how futile. And have her he will, for Domenico treats her as a highly and jealously guarded treasure. Felicia's innate strength demands no less than a queen's respect. Our story. Domenico's ardor for Felicia becomes a raging obsession. He is monstrous in his possessiveness. In one unforgettable scene, Felicia smiles at a handsome youth. Enraged, Domenico has the boy brutally tortured to death. 
as they travel through the hot, dusty lands. A retinue of servants and sycophants escort Domenico and Felicia. Former mistresses accompany Domenico, vying fruitlessly for his attention. He humiliates them callously when they seek his favor. Now, I want you to keep in mind that The Silver Devil was written in 1978, and for its time, it took a daring, daring risk with its lead male character. The hero is, or at least was, bisexual. He had a past affair with Piero, a childhood friend who is now one of his courtiers. But Domenico only has the same for Piero, who pathetically apes Domenico's looks and style, bleaching his hair blonde and wearing the same clothes and garments as, as Domenico. But once Domenico's affection dies out, only contempt remains. His eyes and heart alone belong to Felicia. And I think I've gone into depth before what Domenico does to Pietro. Um, I didn't spoil it in my review online, but here I'll let you know. He does his admirers wrong. In one very emotional scene, Domenico and Pietro are having an open discussion. And in the end, Domenico has no affection for the person he supposedly once loved and lets dogs tear his old friend apart, ripping him limb from limb. So, as a result, it's no surprise when the people turn against Domenico. The beautiful prince falls from grace. There's a tumult in the country and Felicia alone stands by his side, aiding him in his quest to regain power. Domenico is humbled several times over while Felicia remains at his side. She dresses up as a boy and accompanies him as he tries to regain his dukedom. She proves he's more than an object of desire. She has grit and fortitude where others fail. With her by his side, Domenico will rise to power once more. The novel culminates with Domenico declaring his love in a surprisingly vulnerable demonstration of emotion. I knew that the love would not turn the silver devil into an angel. He would remain what he was, subtle yet childish, unfeeling yet passionate, lost irretrievably to everything but his own desire. But he loved me, and I loved him now and forever. Now, my opinion. The writing in The Silver, Silver Devil is gripping. It is absolutely luminescent. However, it's not a sweet tale that leaves a pleasant taste in my mouth. Reading this like a simple love story doesn't work. It's too dark, it's too gothic, too gruesome for me to call it one. This is a fascinating character study of an unhinged, narcissistic megalomaniac and his female object of jealous possession and obsession. I cannot give this book five stars because it fails on one singular level as a romance novel. The Silver Devil is a fabulous piece of historical fiction. It is a monumental work of a psycho psychological analysis. But is it a romance? Only if I engage in, dis in a suspension of all disbelief. final analysis of the Silver Devil, and spoiler, although Domenico is the absolute ruler of a wealthy duchy, he is not, like I said, a typical alpha male. Alphas are devoted to their mates, but they are also leaders who command respect. Domenico struggles spectacularly at this. His dukedom is overtaken, and he must maneuver his way back into power. 
This is done not by coalescing allies, but by deception. He must attain he must attain power by posing as a lowly servant. He is feared by others, but not loved. Contrary to Machiavelli's perspective, fear alone is not enough to keep Domenico secure. In the last pages of The Silver Devil, Felicia gives birth to a son, the heir to Cabrera. The novel concludes on a gloriously positive note. Even so, I had my doubts about the happy finale. Domenico is a mad despot. I could see the inhabitants of Cabria taking him out Mussolini style, and Lord knows what would happen to Felicia and their son. My imagination goes wild, and it's never a good end. So for that, it's best to close this book and leave this story in its final moment of ultimate bliss. There are places on the internet where you can find the Silver Devil and read it for free online. Places like Scribd, um, PDF Coffee, Open Library, Book Books. And the only reason I recommend any of these sites is simply because Jackie Bianchi has been deceased for over 30 years with no heirs. In light of that, I don't see any conflict in reading a non-purchased version of a book that is out of print and costs you hundreds of dollars if you are fortunate enough to find it. So I will leave you with a synopsis of The Silver Devil as it reads on the back of the book. He was cold. He was cruel, a ruthless sensualist riding headlong to hell. He was the silver devil, Domenico, Duke of Cabrera. Felicia was the illegitimate sister of a tavern keeper. She felt nothing but terror when they told her that she had been chosen as the Duke's next mistress, and when they took her, decked in silks and jewels, to the silver devil's bed. We imagine what happens. It's a great book. If you can get your hands on it, I recommend it heartily. Next time, we'll try to get to the flesh and the devil, although I want to write a few more reviews before we do that. But uh, I'm glad to be back, and I hope you enjoy this version of Sweet Savage Flame. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a good 